What's up, everybody? I'm Chad. Welcome back to Eternal Midnight. I'm here with Santino. What's up, man? What's up, dude? How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Guys, we are ta- we've made it. This is the final week of Friday the 13th. We have covered movies one through nine. It has been one hell of a journey so far, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And we are in the final three movies. Jason X, Freddy vs. Jason, and the remake. So let's let's dive right into Jason X. Probably like one of the most random things of this whole franchise, but I that. genuinely enjoy it. I have a blast with this movie. I, I, I enjoy it. It's the weirdest one, but I, I have a blast with them. Yeah, go ahead. Start us off. So Jason X is like, I like the premise, actually. It's Jason in space, and that's, like, you can have some pretty creative kills, and they do have one of the best kills ever in this movie. So, like, yeah, I, I love that. Can't wait to, oh, I, I know what you're talking about. And I'll admit, out of the three ones, the three I watched, this is the one that's arguably the one I had the most fun with. Of the, really, of the final three movies? Yeah. Okay. It's, really, uh, it's really a good film to, to, like, sit back, kick back, relax, watch. It really... But, yeah, this is one of those movies... There's nothing scary about it, and you absolutely cannot take this movie seriously. I mean, it's it, it comes right out and says it. It is Jason in space, and it's just like, how did we go from Camp Crystal Lake, teenagers showing up to train to be camp counselors and start getting butchered by Jason, to Jason stalking teenagers in the far flung future through the halls of a space state of a spaceship? That's also <laughs> honestly like I I. I really like... Okay, so here's the thing. I like the kills, but as usual, the characters are not memorable at all. A lot of... You know what? A lot of them are not... Uh, I mean, uh, the, the main, main lead... The captain. The black captain. He was awesome. Uh, oh, Brodsky? Yeah. The one how, and the way he... And the way he killed Jason was awesome. Like, wow. Brodsky was awesome. Brodsky was hands-on, like, one of the best. Mm-hmm. But, like, the main lead, uh, Lexa Doug as Rowan... Man, she was. Mm-hmm. She was for. She was probably one of the most forgettable, like final girls of I, the I, entire I, franchise. I, I don't remember anything but Brodsky. That's all. Yeah, I, I mean, and well, okay, but what about KM? Is that the is that the robot? KM was the android. Yeah, the the robot who turned into the uh ter- a Terminator, like like a Terminator, you- basically to fight off Jason. Yeah, that was a, that that was awesome. Yeah, yeah, okay, she yeah. was cool. Uh, I did like Janessa. Janessa was kind of that like smart ass brat, yeah. the one who we saw earlier in the movie. She was like sleeping with the teacher to get good grades, and they were like, <laughs> yeah, "Well, weird kinky stuff." That was it. <laughs> Can we use fast forward, please? <laughs> right. I mean, so just... let's go back a little bit. Uh, so basically, this movie, basically what happened was part nine came out, and just stuff they wanted to do Freddy versus Jason right away. But just through all sorts of behind-the-scenes issues and whatnot, it it was kind of put on hold. And New Line was just like, you know, we own the franchise. Let's get something out. But they didn't want to mess with the timeline that they'd established of Jason going to hell. So they were like, we have to do something that whenever Freddy vs. Jason takes place, this will take after it. So it was like, that's why it was like, he's at Crystal Lake Research Facility, which I don't know, why would they build a research facility there? But whatever. And I will say it though, I loved Jason's look in this movie. Oh yeah. The, the, the new one. Look, looked full on bad. I loved his mask. His mask was like different than usual, but I thought it looked awesome. Is this and just his build was really cool. Is this before or after the nanobots like took over? Oh, like, we're not hit, we'll hit Uber Jason later. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just talking straight up regular Jason in this one. Just his look I thought was awesome. And it was like I, I, I did like how in the earlier ones they kind of focused, like, you know, he has the black eyes, you can't see them. I did like how in this one you could see his eyes a little bit. Like at the beginning, when that uh that millet that marine was just kind of like staring at him, and you could like Jason was like looking right at him and like glaring at him. I mean if I was that guy, I'd be kind of scared too. I'd be like, this guy has killed hundreds of people yeah. and I'm the only one stuck in this room with him. Yes, I'm scared. <laughs> I really, I, I, you know, all these kills in the movie like are really good. But then again, I've been so desensitized because, come on, man. I've seen The Night Comes For Us. I've seen that movie. This is like nothing. This is zero compared to like that. So I was like, ah, well, you know, it's awesome. But like, I... 
I say the the most creative kill was that was the can you talk about that the the, the hot girl who got frozen in li- oh. what the hell is what the hell is liquid nitrogen doing there anyway? The, the, the hot That's girl. what happens in space, I guess. <laughs> I mean, yeah, poor girl got her face frozen and then just smashed. Oh. Bam! That was the end of her. That was creative. I love it. That was. I think probably the most. I I don't know. I mean, yeah, that one was messed up. But what about the way Janessa died? Sucked out into space through oh, a yeah. hole the size of a quarter. Yeah, with the quip like where like saying like, oh, you know, this really sucks so hard. Like, oh yeah, nice one. Nice one. <laughs> I see. I liked her character. So watching her die, it was like. No, Janessa! <laughs> so it's like, hey, yeah, this. So basically, the movie is just, it's on the space, it's on the spaceship, and everyone's, I mean, basically, everyone on this spaceship, short of maybe two or three characters, are complete idiots. I mean, they all die in hilarious. I think probably one of the best scenes actually was, um, when Asriel and Dallas were doing that uh, virtual reality game that they were playing, oh, yeah, yeah, and okay. Jason just like went into it and killed them, <laughs> and then they're like, "God damn it, who who went to the simulation?" And then it turned off, and Jason just like, "Wait, I just killed you both." <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. Like, oh, it's just a game, and he actually kills him in real life. Uh, uh, that's awesome. Picks the one dude up, breaks his back, and then smashes the other dude's face. Yeah, I mean. Like we said, some of the kills were creative in this. Some were, some just weren't there. And we'll kind of get to that when we hit the remake. But it was like, yeah, some of the kills in this just, there's been so many that it's like so many memorable ones that it's almost like, where do you go with some of these? So it's like, they had to almost get creative with, they had to get creative with some of it. And some of them worked, and some of them didn't. Yeah, some of them really didn't. I, I just felt like, some of them just like were just like random slash slash and like cut cut throat, stab to the chest, and that's that's fine, I guess. But like, I like how the one marine Jason like pushed him off the ledge, and he like fell onto that giant uh, oh, like, like, like spiral thing or whatever, and just like slowly <laughs> spiraled down. Yeah, like, well, like, what's his position? Uh, he's screwed. Like, nice. It's stuff like that that's what makes this movie enjoyable compared to the others. Because it's like the ones in the 80s had their own type of like style to them. And this one was this one was absolutely nothing like the 80s movies. Or even Jason Goes to Hell, which was a 90s horror film. So it's like it, it this just was like unlike all the rest of them. Which it works in its favor and it works against it. Because it's like it doesn't have the charm of 1 through 8. But it was its own thing. And it's like, while I genuinely I generally don't watch this one that often, and oh. it is ranked pretty low, but that's because I like almost all of this franchise. It's like, I don't watch this one that often, but when I do get a chance to pop it on, I always have a fun time watching it. Exactly. And I feel like, honestly, it's like, um, I have a fun time watching it, although I'm not saying it's the best. To me, I still profess, and this is an unpopular opinion, the best Friday the 13th was the seventh one. It's fine. Yeah, I, I guess I like, you're uh, not alone on that one. Yeah, exactly. But um, this one was okay, I guess. But I, 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 again, I, the characters were as usual. They weren't good. Some of them were really forgettable. The kills were nice. The the standout ones were the corkscrew guy and the ice. And I, and I, I thought it was really funny, honestly. The, the one dude who's who wanted to bang his robot creation. <laughs> You want to make out with those uh sun around. Like oh, yeah, I know, I know, I know you want to, I know you want to. And like halfway through the movie, she he modifies her to become like this Terminator chick and blows Jason to pieces. That like, was that scene was great because it's like this was really the first time that we saw Jason get fucked. I mean, what she she blew off an arm, his leg, she fucking blew off half his head, and it was just like. I mean, obviously, and here's the problem is it's like, this was one of those movies where it was like Uber Jason was kind of ruined. I mean, everybody already knew about him kind of going into the movie. Yeah. For those of you out there who didn't, props to you because you got a nice surprise when you saw the nanobots start going to work and bringing him back. Because it's like me, I'd already seen him. So it's like, ah, it kind of sucked. But it's like for those out there who didn't see that coming, that had to be so cool because Uber Jason looks awesome. Imagine that you have you have resurrection tech at this point. Like wow, I mean like 
I mean, like, so like that's the kind of the plot, the plot of like you have a you have a resurrection technology that can bring back a killer. Why don't you from like his head going, his head going like half off? Why don't you use that towards the, you know, All the, the people. The, the, the victims, yeah, like, what the fuck? Well, don't forget, they did say earlier in the movie that the reason they were studying Jason was because of his regenerative abilities, because oh, they're like, is, we've yeah. tried to kill him in so many different ways, and none of it ever works. And it's like, well, did you ever, like, take him and drop him into, like, a giant meat grinder and slash him into, like, millions of pieces or something? No? Okay. Oh, And they're like, oh, we hung him once. It's like... Really? That that was the way you tried to kill him? You tried to hang him? Why didn't you just why didn't you just launch him into space towards the sun or something? <laughs> yeah, it's so yeah, it's uh, like we said, uh, unfortunately one of the biggest things that brings this movie down is Rowan is just such a bad lead. She's so forgettable. I mean, I, I, I guess she's like the fish out of water. Like she obviously doesn't know this technology. She doesn't know this. She doesn't know this this, yeah. this this time era that she's in, but I mean, she just, I don't know. I don't think we needed her. She was hot though. She was hot, but it's like, I would have rather had Brodsky as the main character. Yeah, same. I would have. I mean, I thought he was a badass through and through the whole movie. Um, hey, can we talk about that? What's up? Uh, for, uh, the, the captain grabbing Jason and pulling him into orbit. Oh, well, he and wasn't the, the captain. He was he was the head of the military unit. The head of the military guy mission pulling him to orbit and like basically they just burn up as they're going down to Earth too. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's awesome. And then like that when, was cool. Jason's mask landing and like a new crystal egg. Like, oh, that's awesome. Like, I, you know what? It's funny because it's almost like I don't know if New Line was planning on this being like the last one, but I almost thought it was. I I almost want to think that they did. Because it was, like, that was almost symbolic, you know? The mask is all that's left. It sinks to the bottom of the lake, and there it rests. It's almost like, it's almost like New Line was putting the series to rest with that scene right there. Yeah, yeah, it seems like that's the final Friday the 13th movie. And of, so of, the, or of, the, of the one through ten. I mean, Freddy, we'll get to Freddy versus Jason in a few minutes, which that was a spinoff side movie thing we'll call it. but it's like of the main one through 10 i i do think like 10 was a nice round number and probably a decent area to kind of pop finish things off true true and, and um it's definitely the weirdest but it, it it's very it's very um it reminds me a lot of aliens in the sense that it's like you know survivors on the ship and there's this killer picking up them picking them off one by one it's like yeah i've seen it before but i like it fuck Jason's doing it and it's really creative. And it's just it's just the fact that while I do like the kills and I like some of the characters, it's just the fact that you know, it's really cliche sometimes and yeah, as you said, Rowan wasn't really a, a, a good main lead, really. I mean like I I did like her and I just felt like okay, um uh she was in suspend animation for four centuries and then she's brought back and in this new world and all that, like I, it could have been more compelling if she was written better. But you know, we're not here really for the characters. We're here to see Jason kill people. So yeah, I, I mean, understand. I'll give the credit I will give Rowan is what she did was heroic at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, she, making like risking her life after Jason just took out like a gigantic squad of Marines to try and trap him. It's like. Props to her because she easily probably could have just ran outside, jumped in a car, and drove off. But she did. I mean, yeah, obviously she wasn't planning on getting stabbed. She yeah. probably, like a dumbass, shouldn't have stood in front of the cryogenic yeah, freezing, yeah, freezing machine. Don't stand near it. Yeah. Exactly. Lock him in. Run out the door and lock it from the outside. Yeah, you would have. <laughs> like you permanently locking him in there. You would have like solved like a lot of problems. Like you can't mm -hmm. kill Jason. You can. Freeze him for next like entries. That's fine. But I mean, it is what it. But it was cool. I mean, I did think some of the um, there was some cool cameos in here. So the one uh, Marine Dallas, the one who was playing the VR game. Yeah. That was uh, that was Todd Farmer, and Todd Farmer is actually the one who wrote this movie. Oh. Uh... And uh, remember that scientist at the beginning of the movie, the kind of like older dude with gray hair, who Rowan was like, the dick we bag. need to cut this off and kill him, and he's yeah. like, no, we're gonna study him. Yeah. 
That was David Cronenberg. Who was he again? He, he's a horror director. Lots of other people will know. He he did The Fly. Oh. And a bunch, and a bunch of other stuff that, but you probably just haven't heard of them all. But um, yeah. Overall, this movie is it, it, it was fun, but like I said, it's not in my top. I, I have fun I, with it, but, but it's it, not it, the same type of fun I get out of watching like four or three or like seven. Yeah, it, 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 like I, I this is like a this to me is like Revenge of the Fallen. It's fun, but it's not good. <laughs> this was better than Revenge of the Fallen. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's very, it's in that category of like it's dumb shit. That's right. Awesome, yeah. It was that like self-aware of like yeah, we're we're doing a slasher film with Jason yeah. in space in in the future. Yeah, we're 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 gonna have fun with this. So it's like props to them for having fun and I think delivering. Well, it was a fun movie. I mean, say this had been the only one you'd ever seen. You yeah. hadn't seen one through nine. You you would have had a blast with it probably, right? Yeah, I would have. Because it's just it's just fun. It really so, is. I, I, I appreciate the no, I'll, 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 I'll make it like this. It is certainly a lot more creative than some of the other Friday the 13th movies, and I appreciate that. I mean, like, I appreciate how directors are trying to add new mystical elements to, like, the franchise. Like, in 7, you had the telekinetic girl. In, like, in, the, in 8, you had, like, oh, let's put Jason in Manhattan. And then, oh. And in 9, you have him as a demon. And this one, like, he's in space. So, like, I appreciate that you're trying to, you know, that's, you know, like, uh, credit. Oh, and don't forget the virtual reality girls. Oh, yeah. Homage to number seven when they, where he, like, yeah, it's awesome. Yep, that, that's where they got it. They took that yeah. from seven. And, yeah. again, this was Kane Hodder, who played Jason in part seven. So he got to basically remake one of his most famous kills. That's awesome, and that's poetic think, justice right there. And and um, it's like this. It's like I'm sorry if I get shot for this, but uh, in all honesty, the Friday seven, eight, nine, ten are more creative than the Star Wars sequels. <laughs> be- wow. Be- because no, look at it. There at least at least the directors have the guts to try new things with Jason. They make have a have him fight. They knew movie. what they knew what Friday the Thirteenth was, and they had fun with it. Yeah, they make him fight a mystical girl. They make him fight. They put him in Manhattan. They make him a demon. They make him fight Freddy. They put him on space. At least they're trying some new stuff and not remaking Return of the Jedi or Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. So they are certainly more creative than the Star Wars sequels. So I'll give you that. You know, props to them. I mean, at least at least they're. At least they're trying to do something new. Hell, even even in the the remake, Jason's a faster survivalist dude who kills people a little a little bit differently. But at least mm-hmm. even even in the remake, at least they're trying something more. So you know, props to them. I mean, like, yeah, is the plot sometimes bad? Yeah, sure it is. But like, at least they're trying something different. Definitely. Speaking of something different. Now we're coming up to the movie that fans of Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th had been waiting for since we saw that glove pop out of the ground at the end of uh, Jason Goes to Hell. Freddy versus Jason. So this, what did you think of this uh, this crossover? I had a fun time with it, dude. I honestly really did. It was such a good, it was such a good way to bring these two horror icons together. Yeah, Freddy Krueger. I've, and I've never seen Nightmare on Elm Street, but mm. I really so, enjoy So you've never seen Nightmare on Elm Street. Did why, And you've told me before that a, a buddy of yours filled you in on who Freddy was. But let's just say you'd never, he hadn't told you about that. Would you say that intro like to, did a pretty damn good job of setting up and telling you who Freddy Krueger was? It was a pretty damn good intro, like when he killed a little girl and he likes the photograph. Like, that, that was, was pretty, so creepy. That was disgusting as hell. Like, I did love. I love that voiceover he did though, from the beginning all the way up through when the title screen came up, where he was describing what he was doing in hell, why he was there, how he couldn't get out, and all that. I thought that was kind of interesting. 
Yeah, same. I, I did like it. It's just the fact that um, I, I've how never... How he got Jason out of hell. Yeah, and how he got... How the hell did he get Jason out of hell? If he know? has the powers to resurrect Jason, how does he not have the powers to get himself out of hell? Yeah, yeah, it's weird. And they... <laughs> And, here, and here's the thing. The characters in this movie are not that good, honestly. That's, that, that, that's what uh, bothers no. them. They're that's not. I mean, them. Monica Kina as Lori was hot. Yeah. And uh, what's her face? Um, Catherine Isabel as Geb, she was hot too. But it's like, I did not like Kia in the slightest. I, I thought her character was annoying, generic, 2000s, annoying as fuck teenager. And... All of the guys were either bland or assholes, except for that one random guy who looked like he wanted to be Jay from Jay and Silent Bob. <laughs> speaking of speaking of uh, assholes, I love the first kill. That oh, bag who was like, "Yeah, babe, I told you, I do. I don't want to be touched that way, you know." And then he, the girl goes, "Babe, what I tell you about touching me after you smoke?" Yeah. <laughs> and then. And then uh, the, he the girl goes to the bathroom. Jason's there, stabs him like multiple times, folds him up like that. Oh, oh just crushes him right in half. You hear him just like crunches the bed goes and ah, oh, that was painful. Oh, he farm up. And the second best kill was when Jason's on fire. He takes the flame machete and just you know, chucks it like a spear to the guy's like mouth. And they're like, oh, oh shit. Threw it right into the fat dude, and the fat dude like spits up blood all over the place. <laughs> See, that was that was one of my favorite scenes with Jason was like he comes out of the, like the corn and he's like on fire and he just starts slashing people left and right. And I love it. One of the dudes that he kills like looks like a hippie or something. And like this dude's like throwing shit at him. And the whole time he's throwing stuff at him, he's like, you killed my brother, you motherfucker. And then Jason just like slashes him and the dude dies. Awesome. I <laughs> I did like um, the thing is the thing is like for me it's called Freddy versus Jason. Mm-hmm. Freddy hardly kills anyone. He kills one guy. He got one kill. And the weird thing is, Freddy started with New Line, and New Line is the one who made this movie. I am stunned that they did that to their. I'm shocked that they played up Jason, a character that they purchased more than the character that they they've owned since the '80s. Yeah. It was just weird. I'm like. Freddy's yours. Shouldn't you be playing him up as the big hero? Yeah. And or honestly, not the not the hero, like the main killer. Yeah, and honestly, like what I what 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 I, what I didn't expect was the change to the lore. Like Jay, I, I I'm of two minds about that. I didn't like that they changed Jason to being afraid of water. Yeah, because he's never been afraid of water. Never. He's lived, I mean, lived underground, lived underwater for like seven to nine. Yeah, how many and how many times did we see him go into water to kill like her. without fear? Yeah. So it's like that. I thought that was dumb. Um, I will say probably though probably the only cool thing about that though was I did like Jason's dream sequence when he was asleep and he was back at Crystal Lake, like remembering when all those kids threw him in the water or whatever, and like none of the counselors were paying attention. Yeah, and Freddy was um, there. Yeah, and then, like, Freddy in the dream starts drowning him. And then this is probably one of my favorite shots of the whole movie was when um, they were able to, like, bring Jason out. Like, they, like, crashed or something, and Jason, like, flew out of the van, and he, like, woke up from, like, the coma that they put him into, and he suddenly disappeared from the dream right as Freddy was about to kill him. And he sees Laurie in the dream world up there up on the dock, and it's like suddenly it's like the whole filter of the film just like goes red. And Freddy is just like, you. He flies out of the water, lands on the dock. And it's like he they gave him a complete makeover for that scene. And he just like he looked more like a demon than he did like the regular looking Freddy Krueger. I was like, that's awesome. That scene that was, was awesome. so cool. What's wrong, Rory? Mission wake up call. I've never. I've, this is the first time I've ever seen Robert Englund as. Um, What'd you think of him as Freddy? Wow. Like, does it, it make you want to watch those movies now? Yeah, n- not really makes me want to watch those movies. It really does. Because we'll awesome. get to we'll get to those at some point. <laughs> now I really want to. Now I really want to watch those movies because it's like, wow, holy shit! Those, those are. 
those, those are like awesome. Awesome. Those are fun. If you enjoyed most of Friday the 13th, you'll enjoy the bulk of Nightmare on Elm Street. I'm pretty sure I will. So You like, will. Because I, those are creative. Those, I mean, you, you we've talked about creative kills throughout uh, all of our um, reviews so far. And, I mean, Freddy's killing people in their dreams. So it's like they got to be really creative. So we'll, we'll, we'll move past that because I want to save that for when we get to Nightmare on Elm Street one day. But, um... So just, what did you think of the story of this movie? Because I know you told me you thought this story was really oh, yeah. not good. The plot was dumb. I just feel like, okay, you're going to put these two characters together to fight, but like you could have done it in a way better way. I, I was told by my friend that the original script was actually them competing for Satan's favoritism, where they're going to, f- how many kills they can rack up, which has been way better than just... Uh, Freddie bringing back Jason so that they will remember him and he will have fear. And what's funny is um, that almost like the way that that sounds like this movie was made in uh, like th- this came out in 2003. The what you just described right there, that sounds like something they would have done in the 80s. Like that yeah. that ranks right up there with some of the like the campy shit that they would have done in the 80s. And it's almost like. I guarantee they probably had like a script like that written out at some point, and then they hit the 2000s. And they're like, yeah, that doesn't work anymore. And it's like, but it could have been the 80s. Yeah, it could have been the 80s exactly. The problem so, is yeah, the like, story just ah. Uh... Story was it was ass honestly. It just felt like um, yes, uh, the it's nice, but I mean like the characters are bland and the stories forget. But when it's Freddy versus Jason, it really is Freddy versus Jason. There's like a lot of cool stuff that I like. Like in the so, dream. Before we hit that, I want to talk about Jason real quick. Yeah. Um. So we we got used to seeing Ke- uh, Kane Hodder playing Jason. He was Jason in 7, 8, 9, and X. And according to the documentary, um, nobody seems to know or admit why Kane Hodder was not Jason in this. The director says New Line didn't want him. New Line says the director didn't want him. Uh, because the big thing that it was, was they wanted a Jason, and it's not sure who, the studio or the director. They wanted a Jason that was towering, a giant over Freddy Krueger. And I don't know if in real life Kane Hodder is the same height as Robert England or if he's shorter. So, I mean, if that's the reason... Fine, because I guess they wanted two polar opposites. Like they wanted Freddy with the mouth and the brains versus Jason with the strength and just like the big dumb muscle, which Uh, fine. But it's almost like this was a very different Jason than what we've seen for so many movies before this. Right, exactly. And I just felt like, um, I felt like the whoever played him, you mentioned him with that guy from... So the guy who played him in this was Ken Kurtzinger. And Ken Kurtzinger was actually already in Friday the 13th. He was the bus boy in the diner in uh, Manhattan of Jason Takes Manhattan. He's the one that Jason, like, he, like, came at him and Jason, like, picked him up and, like, threw him over the bar. Right, exactly, exactly. So it's like he got beaten up by Jason and then he got to play Jason. (laughs) Exactly. So, like, I I did like what they were doing. I I like Jason in this movie. Like, I mean, like to be fair, he has the best kills, and because oh, yeah. he has like, he takes up ninety nine percent of the actual kills in the movie. <laughs> he kills everyone except, except one every, guy. Except, except the except the guy, the the freaking what's his face? The the dude who showed his ass at the mental institution. Right, exactly, and uh, and it, the, I like the branding of the Freddy's back. You know, yeah, like, that was cool, and I did like that scene where like uh. Lori and Will were like rushing back to the house to find him, and he suddenly like got thrown up against the window, and like his eyes open, and then suddenly the slash marks across his face. I was like, that was cool looking. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then you said something about the lore, like um, that girl, the, the what's her face, the one you don't like. Oh yes. So they screwed up the lore. Uh, whatever happens to you in the dream world happens to you in real life. Uh, for nightmare fans, you know this. When Nancy stuck her arm on the scalding hot pipe in Nightmare on Elm Street 1 to wake herself up and get out of the dream, she woke up and she had the giant burn on her arm. She pulled Freddy's hat out of her dream. 
And then even in this movie, Lori pulls Freddy out of the dream world and brings him into the real world. She did she did it once for real, and another time she did so, she pulled something else. She had ripped his ear off, I think. So it's like Freddy ripped Kia's nose off in her dream, and she woke up and she was fine. It's like no, that's no. You can't break your own lore just for a quick jump scare. I I I, I get that. I get that this is just a cheesy horror slasher film, but it's like, this is like in, in Friday the 13th, this is number 11 in nightmare on Elm street. This is movie number eight. You, you've built up your own lore long enough that you need to abide by your own rules that you've established. And I've heard people be like, Oh, he wasn't strong enough yet. Yeah. But we saw that earlier in the movie with, um, Oh God, I don't remember. I think it was either Blake. It was Blake. Uh, when Freddy tried to attack him and he was like a ghost and he couldn't really stab him yet. And it's yeah. like, no, he's he's gotten stronger now. If he ripped her nose off in her dream, her nose gets ripped off in real life. Yeah, exactly. And so it, it just felt like that's that's weird. Mm-hmm. They, I think they just did it for a quick jump scare, which, nah, come on, you guys. I hated Kia anyways. I would have rather her die right there at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. So let, let's get to what uh, – let's get to the main event. What was the main well, event? Freddy versus Jason. And to be fair, as, the, with, with, despite the cons in this movie, to be fair, the Freddy versus Jason fight was kick-ass. Yes. Both the fight in the real world and in the dream world. So in the dream world, like, Freddy, of course, it's his world. So he has the upper hand. So uh, he's basically fucking Jason over and using him as a pinball machine. Like, that was hilarious, that scene in the dream world where you see Jason bounce between the pipes. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> and then in the real world, of course, Jason is the stronger dude. So he has the brand. So like Jason like grabs Freddy like by like a fucking China doll and throws him across the windows. Like oh, it's clearing him out. Like, wow, that's insane. Smashing him right through. And then it's like the fight gets dragged out to outside, and then it's like all the survivors of like everything so far, they just start dying one by one. The one dude, that one dude, that like nerdy dude who like stood up to Kia and like called her a bitch, they like suddenly out of the blue have a romance at the end, and then he's like, Kia, go 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 get someone. I'm I'm gonna like wait right here, and like he got like impaled earlier, and he's like bleeding, and he knows it, and he just dies right there, bleeding out in the middle of the woods all alone, and then. Kia, after using, I cannot believe they kept it in the movie, like such a homophobic slur, um, just gets like sitting there taunting Freddy. And then Freddy just like laughs and like points like, turn around. She turns around. Jason just hits her in the face with a machete as if he just like took like a home run swing with a baseball bat and wham, she just flies through the air and she's history. And I was like, good, fuck you, bitch. I hated that character and I was so happy when she died. Oh yeah, honestly, I, I didn't agree either. And mm-hmm. then uh, the fight itself, like on the dock with Freddy and Bruce Jason, oh, like beautiful. I, I mean, it's not as brutal as Ito versus Aryan in The Night Comes for Us. It's really not. But like, there's some, <laughs> there's some great hits. Like my favorite one is when it's from Freddy. Actually, despite him not killing a lot in this movie, he really does get the upper hand when well, not really get the upper. Like he gets one of the best. Like hits in the he upper hand. He has a he has a glove on his hand. Grabs, <laughs> we're playing on so he grabs Jason by the neck, takes his finger knives, and jams it into Jason's face. Oh, right in his eyes. Oh, that was. Oh my God. I actually cringe. Like, oh, that's that's disgusting. Yeah, because it's like I mean, this is when the blood started coming out in this movie. I mean. Right in his eyes, the blood just comes out of, like, every hole of the hockey mask suddenly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was – that was great. And then, I mean, we're, we get to a point where it's like Jason's got the upper hand a little bit. He's about to do the finishing blow. Freddy cuts his fingertips off and grabs the machete and starts hitting Jason. Jason takes his hand with some of his fingers cut off and rams it into Freddy's stomach. And using his other arm, he rips Freddy's gloved – he rips his whole fucking arm off. And then they're fucking, they're both just covered, drenched in blood. Uh, Lori covers the where they're fighting in gasoline and throws fucking fire on it and blows them both into the lake. And then Freddy somehow comes back for like the last second. And then Jason rams Freddy's 
own arm right through his chest. It was beautiful. I mean, it was awesome. It really was. It was it was a blast to watch. It's like that to me is like the last like half hour of this movie to me is like this is that's the part I usually watch. Like I'll I like watching the intro, but once like once we get to the point where like the characters start getting introduced, I don't care anymore because I don't like these characters at all. I I want to like Lori. I do because I, I like Monica Kina. She's pretty cute. I thought she was decent, but again she just she didn't hold a candle to any of the girls from to many of the girls from the the previous ten entries. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, just she just they tried to tie her into you know like the lore with Freddie and Freddie killed her mom and all that. It just it didn't work. And it's like probably the only thing I think that did kind of work as a carryover from Nightmare, which we'll cover this more in depth uh, when we hit the Nightmare franchise one day. Uh, the hypnosil stuff that was mentioned in Nightmare on Elm Street 3. So I think it's kind of cool they brought it back. I think what we'll do is when we hit the Nightmare on Elm Street month, we'll do Freddy versus Jason again. And we'll, we'll talk a little more about Freddy's side of things maybe yeah. after you've watched them. So we can have a little more knowledge on Freddy from your side. Maybe. But um, yeah, with Jason's stuff, yeah, I mean, Jason really was just here as the powerhouse muscle who was just – he was here to just fuck stuff up. And you know what? He passed with flying colors in my book. Yeah, he really did, honestly. He was so good. And, like, what what do you think of that last scene of him walking out of the lake with Freddy's decapitated head? Thanks. Freddy Brinks is like, oh, that's awesome. Like, I, it's like, where's our sequel? <laughs> Someone has a poster, actually. Like, him walking out with Freddy's head. Like, oh, that's awesome. It'd be a sick poster to have on the wall. So yeah, Freddy versus Jason, it just, it, it was a fun crossover. I think it was a great, I don't think it's one of the best, but I genuinely think it was a great treat to all the fans out there who love Friday the 13th and who love Nightmare on Elm Street and had been wanting this since uh, Jason Goes to Hell had come out. I mean, people had been begging for this. So it's like, you know what? It may not have been exactly what everyone wanted, but you know what? What we got was a fun time. It wasn't the best thing, but I had a blast watching it, and I have fun watching, like I said, the intro and the last half an hour. Those are always fun to watch. Yeah, for real. I really like it. And I So now we're taking a dive for the worse. Oh, boy. The remake. All right. I, I don't like it. I, mean, like, I oh. did not like it either. Overall, not, okay. I, I really did not like this movie. It's okay. I'll start with some of the positives because I have a feeling this is going to be a pretty negative review. Um, I liked, uh, I liked Derek Mears as Jason. Um, I didn't think, I, I thought he did a pretty good job. Um, I thought the story, <sighs> okay. I thought the beginning of, uh, I thought the beginning of the movie showing that Jason did survive the drowning and kind of like the beginning where the credits were playing, where we saw, we basically saw the end of the original first movie with Mrs. Voorhees killed the counselors. The last one decapitates her. And then we pick up like where the original one left off with Jason finding his mother's head and um, like going to live in the woods and becoming the hermit. This is right as it's being part two. No, that was the first. No, no, no. This was the end. Of, this was like the end of the original one. And then they basically just kind of like that first group of teens, Whitney and her friends. I guess they were serviceable, tolerable. Yeah. Kind of. I don't know. I see. I don't even even Clay played by Jared Padalecki. I just I couldn't connect with this guy. And it's like it was obvious they were trying to make him. Like, uh, they were trying to remake part four with him looking for his sister. And they were trying to, I think, imitate the group from part four with uh, Jenna and Trent and their group of friends at the house. But they just, these people were not interesting. I didn't find any of them funny. I didn't, I, the only ones who I almost enjoyed were Nolan and Chelsea, and they were the ones killed uh, on the lake right at yeah. the beginning. And it's like, 
I would have rather the other two, the two comic relief guys. I would rather have them died earlier in the movie. Yeah, it, it, it just feels like, okay, okay, uh, props, props where props are. Credit where credit is due. Jason was awesome in this movie. I did yes. like, I did like uh, how he was portrayed. He's not really like the slow brute. He's a bit faster. He has, he's killing people like, he doesn't need to kill people with a machete. He's doing long range kills with a bow and arrow and all that. So I did like it. Like, oh yeah, like, that I was like, like the only interesting kill of the whole movie. I thought though was yeah, the bow and arrow. Or or the sleeping bag kill where like again like they hung 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 up. Yeah, the be yeah that okay that one. But then the rest were just stab. You're dead. Yeah, yeah. Again, it's like one of these movies where it. Like, why couldn't we have gotten something like in part six where like he pulled that girl out of the window and then like twisted her head around or something or. He, you know, takes like a weed whacker and slices your stomach open. Well, what happened to like that? Or like, what is it? I think I remember one because I would just rewatch the remake right before this. Why couldn't we have seen something like he shot Nolan with the arrow in the head? He died. He hit Chelsea with the boat. And it was showing that the ski rope was still dragging behind. Why couldn't we have like seen the ski rope like wrap around her throat and like drag her across the lake or something and like yeah. choke her to death and then she drowns and then do some like shot of her like drowning or something and she's already dead. Why why did we have to get just boom stabbed to the head? Oh, I it's I think it's cuz they just wanted to show her tits again. Yeah, it just feels like um they really I I feel like this is the one I think this is like the my least favorite. It really yes, is. this is my this is the this is, this is the last one for me. Yeah, because it's like it's just not good. I feel like Jason is nice. But the characters really bog it down. I did like Daniel Panabaker. She was like one of the girls. She, yeah, but she's good in everything. She's good in everything. And she's even in The Flash where it's not even good anymore. Because it kind of sucks now. Uh, it, <laughs> she was, she's still great. I've heard in like the later episodes. And she's good as Killer Frost. It's just in this one, it, she, she I like her character. It's just the fact that um, the rest are just bogged down by... And it, it's like Trent was just like... He was like the biggest asshole of all yeah. twelve of these movies. I yeah. felt like. Yeah, and, and, I mean, I, I'm glad he died the way he did, but it's just like, I don't know. It's like compare him to Melissa from Part Seven. I at least enjoyed really? Melissa in some I, scenes where I hated every scene Trent was in. Melissa was enjoyable because she was hot. Just saying. <laughs> but she was also, I mean, yes, Melissa was hot, but she was also just a raging bitch. But it's like Trent was just like a complete asshole to the point where it's like at least you could understand why some of the people in part seven enjoyed being around Melissa. I don't understand how anyone could enjoy being around Trent. Like he was an asshole to the point where it's like how could anybody be friends with this guy? Yeah, exactly. And then, yeah, just like his group of friends almost yeah, all I forgettable. Didn't, I, didn't like I, mean, I mean, like even for Friday the 13th characters, they were just like – they were bland. They were so stereotypical. They were so, they were cookie cutter characters, and I just felt like, okay, this is the hot girl. This well, and it's girl. and the funny thing that you mentioned that is they were, but at the same time, they had characters like that in the '80s movies that were like, this is their thing, but they at least stood out. Like none of these characters stood out to me. I didn't, I didn't watch any of them really get killed and feel bad for them. I mean. None of them. I mean, I kind of felt bad, I guess, when Jenna, Daniel Panabaker, got killed at the end because you thought yeah. she was going to make it. She's going to make it also. But it's like watching, like, Chewie get killed. I didn't give a shit. I was like, no, well, there he goes. Watching Lawrence get killed. He was the one who got the hatchet. I didn't care. The thing uh, is, like, um, you got to have something to hook the audience. And yeah, like, or, or like even Bree. Bree was the, Bree was the like, really hot one, the one who uh, was banging Trent or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, yes, yeah, she was hot, but it's like she didn't have a character. Yeah, and the the, the thing with this one, it's like as I, I mentioned earlier that they like props to the Friday Thirteenth creators for at least making, make, uh, at least for putting more creative juices in in the the following sequels. It's like this one's like the least creative. I mean, like there's some creativity with the way Jason kills people and the way how he is because he's faster. And like kidnapping more. Whitney because she looks like his mom. Exactly. Like she's like, he's faster. He's, he's he's using traps. He's he's using bone arrows. That was cool, but but that's not enough creativity to save the movie. Like even mm -hmm. even Jason X, I can still have fun with it because at least it's creative enough to put Jason in space or Freddy versus Jason. 
they're putting Jason uh, against another horror icon. Jason takes Manhattan. Jason takes Manhattan is putting Jason up again in New York, like a city that's not Camp Crystal Lake. Jason, uh, right, uh, the the New Blood puts Jason against a telekinetic girl. And number nine, even if I don't like it all that much, they at least did something new with like making Jason this ethereal being. This one is just like, a, it's just the same thing except that Jason's faster now, which is not. Yeah, say- it's it's unfortunate because because it's like I genuinely stand by Derek Mears did a damn good job as Jason. It's unfortunate. And it's because- like I think he I think he if they'd had a better script, a better story, and not gone for basically like a remake of four. I think this would be remembered way better. Like yeah. I, I know from the horror community that it's starting to grow a fan base. I see a lot of, I've seen some people out there who, who really love this one, but I also know there's a lot of people out there like me. I don't like it. I, 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 I don't, I, I enjoy, like I, if I could, if I could make myself like a cut of this film where I'm just watching Jason be a badass, that's the cut I would watch. I, I don't, cause I don't care about these yeah. characters. I Black. really don't. Interesting. And it's just an, it's just a remake of either part four or part two because it just feels like they're not they're not doing anything new. I mean, like I I, I always would have wanted like I always said like we should do something new even with even with the superhero genre right now. Like what are, what are the most creative things right now from superhero genre? It's the TV shows, Umbrella Academy, and The Boys. They're doing creative stuff in the superhero genre. And as much as I more I like Marvel and DC, they also need to step up their game and make make some new stuff. It's the same here with here. It's the same thing with Friday the 13th. As much as I think that Jason X and Freddy vs. Jason were not like the best masterpieces of cinema, at least they were enjoyable enough to be like, okay, it's a new setting to put Jason in or Freddy. Mm. This one is just like, it's a new Jason, and I want to see, I want to see this kind of Jason in like, in like somewhere that's not Camp Crystal Lake. You know what I mean? Like a fast- right, but done better than what a. Uh- well, I mean, we got that with Jason X. Yeah, exactly. Like, but like, but like, but like, you have so much. You have so many locations. Like, how about you make this Jason instead of like making it an entirely remake? Remake it, but like, put him somewhere. Put him in London. Put him in London and have him fight like uh, British people instead of American teams. <laughs> See, like, wouldn't it be awesome? Like a, a faster Jason, like, uh, fighting British people in a bar with like you know uh, whiskey bottles and scotch. Or do it. You know what? What? They all take place in the summer. Why not have one take place in the winter? Right, exactly. Kill people like, in the snow. Like, the, people go camping in the winter. You can kill people in the snow. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Or like, like, uh, or like, uh, you know, or put them in, put them in a different location. Put them, put them in Rio for all I care. You know, Rio de Janeiro. Put well, in- yeah, but I mean, to get him to, to get, to get him to some of those locations are difficult because it's like, how do you do it? Chad, they put him in space. It's not that difficult <laughs> to put him in Rio. Come on. It's not, it's not, it's yeah, yeah. I, I know, I know. Yeah, but it's like, see, that's the thing. That would have fit, I think, better with the original timeline of 1 through 10, which unless they're going to – unless someday they pick up with that again, yeah. which I, I'll go into that when we do our re- our final uh, retrospective of the fr- – when we do our final episode of wrap-up. Um. I don't know. I just, as of right now, the series is basically in um, like legal limbo over who owns it. And that's why nothing's happened with it recently. So I, I'd like to see more. I'd like to see some more stuff come out. But yeah, overall, this remake, um, yeah, it's forgettable. And I, th- this is just one I, I, I'm not going to watch again anytime soon. I really wouldn't either because it, it just feels like while Jason, while Jason is good in this movie. I really did like Jason. He, he's no Kane Hodder, but mm-hmm. Jason is good in this movie. The characters bog it down way too much, and I feel like this is really the worst one. It's fine. Jason is fine in it. The characters just suck. Mm-hmm. So, alright, guys. That wraps it up. 12 <laughs> Friday the 13th movies. Wow. Well... We'll, we'll we'll talk our final thoughts when we do our final uh, closing episode. But I mean, what a what a couple of weeks it's been, huh? Yep, it really has been. So next month, uh, it, next month in September, that's going to be Santino's month. He's going to be taking the lead on that one. Uh, but before we get there, we do have one 
more Sunday before we hit September. And it? we were kind of brainstorming. We're like, you know what? What what can we do that's just kind of random? A, a little tiny little franchise. And Santino, you want to tell them what we're doing uh, next Sunday? Yeah, so Chad, we've been spending enough time in Camp Crystal Lake. I think it's time we go back to the big city with superheroes, but not any, not, not no Avengers, no, just big, no. Real superheroes who can really Real. kick ass. Yeah. Bring kick ass. There we go. Kick ass one and two next week, guys. So let us know below what you thought of everything. Um, give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you had fun with us, whether you agree with uh, what we think of the movies or not. Um, hopefully you had fun. So, guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm Chad. Have a good night. And I'm Santino. Have a good day. See you guys.